Small Steps, Chapter 31. God, I can breathe again, Kara said. The crowds of people and the strong smells of Chinatown had gotten to her. I could kill for a cup of coffee. He believed her. They were now in the Italian section of the city, which Kara said was called North Beach, but he didn't see any sand or water. The streets were lined with Italian restaurants, cafes, bookstores, and other small shops. One shop sold nothing but old postcards. It's not a beach, Kara explained. It's just called that. Kind of like Camp Green Lake, said Arm Armpit. They went down into a basement coffee house, interspersed between the tables. The vertical wooden be beams supported the ceiling. The wood seemed especially dark and rich, as if it had been absorbing coffee for the last 50 years. The girl behind the counter had a teardrop tattoo under her left eye. Kara ordered a double cappuccino and asked for whipped cream on the top. The same, said Armpit. He would have felt dumb asking for a Coke in a place like this. Coffee was served in cups the size of soup bowls. The eternally crying girl sprinkled powdered chocolate over the whipped cream. Kara picked out some kind of twisted pastry that was big enough for them to share, then took her coffee and pastry and went looking for a table. $9.20, said the girl behind the counter. Armpit was surprised by how cheerful she sounded. He paid with a tin and left the change in the tip jar. Kara was emptying a packet of sugar into her coffee when he sat down next to her. The remains of another sugar packet lay in a small coffee puddle next to her cup. Isn't this place great, she asked. Beatniks used to read poetry and play bongos on that stage. The stage was this triangular space in the corner raised about a foot off the floor. It was empty now, but there were small posters attached to the beams, advertising various folk singers and poets who would be performing over the next few weeks. Armpit just hoped the beams were strong enough to hold up on an earthquake. If they'd been around since beatnik times, they must be strong, he thought. Either that or they were ready to break at the next little shake. He tried to take a sip of his cappuccino, but couldn't quite figure out how to do it without getting whipped cream on his nose. I'd like to sing on a small stage like that. No flashing lights, no backup singers, no blood-sucking agents or business managers. Just get up there and sing and then pass around a hat. People pay what they want. Her eyes lit up. You could be my guitar player. That'd be great, Armpit agreed, except I don't know how to play the guitar. Kara laughed. She tore off a piece of the pastry, dipped it in her coffee and tasted it. Oh, that's so good. She dunked a second piece and fed it to Armpit. The pastry was good, but her fingertips were even better. So how's Jenny? Same. Great, he said. You're so good with her, Kara said. I really admire that. I have a hard time around handicapped kids. Armpit rarely thought of Jenny as handicapped. Have you ever heard of the Make-A-Wish Foundation, she asked him. Yeah, I think so. In a couple weeks, I'm supposed to spend the day with a nine-year-old girl dying of some disease. I was her wish. It's really nice of you. He took a sip of coffee, then wiped the whipped cream off his nose with his napkin. I dread it, said Kara. I know that makes me sound like an awful person, but I just get creeped out about being with someone like that. My manager said it's good publicity. I don't know what she wants from me. I'm just a singer. It's not like I can cure cancer. She's not expecting you to cure her, said Armpit. Just look her in the eye. Let her know she's real. Kara looked deep into his armpit's eyes. Just like that, he said. She smiled and said, you're so wonderful. No, I'm not, he said. Yeah, you really are, said Kara. He reached across a small table and held her hand. There's something I got to tell you, he said. Oh my gosh, Kara said playfully, you look so serious. It's just that he wasn't sure how to begin. You know at the concert how Jeannie and I had counterfeit tickets? A man wearing a shirt and tie and one pearl earring suddenly approached the table. You're Kara de Leon, aren't you? Kara took a second and admitted it. Yeah, this is my friend Theodore. The guy didn't even give a glance at armpit. My niece plays your CD all the time, the Fountain of Youth, right? Yep, said Kara. Only one of her CDs I can listen to without throwing up. Uh, thanks, I guess, said Kara. Not really, for overproduced commercial pap, it's not too bad. The guy stretched his arm in front of Armpit's face and said, I'm very honored to meet you. Kara shook his hand. He handed her a napkin. Would you mind? Kara showed him her empty hands, but he gave her a pin. She, sig she signed the napkin. Thanks, thanks a lot. My niece will love it. Now, are you doing for me? He asked, handing her another napkin. Sorry about that, Kara said once the guy left. Armpit shrugged. So what were you about to tell me? He wasn't sure it was the right time anymore. Everyone in the cafe seemed to be looking at them. About the concert, Kara prompted. Armpit took a breath. Okay, uh, here's the thing. You know the letter you sent me? Kara laughed. Yeah, I think I remember it. Talk about embarrassing. Right. So will you write me another letter, one that's not so embarrassing? Kara smiled and leaned close and whispered, maybe it'll be more embarrassing. No, that's not what I meant. I mean, write one sometime this weekend. You don't have to mail it. Just write it in your handwriting and give it to me. Why? There's this guy who wants to buy it for $150. What? That came out wrong. He wasn't used to drinking coffee, and it felt like his brain was racing off in different directions. Let me explain. Yeah, I think you better. So I didn't get the tickets from a scalper. 
Well, technically I did, but I didn't buy them. You're not making any sense. See, I have this friend and he was scalping tickets. We bought 12 tickets for your concert. I paid for the tickets and he sold them and we split the profit. You're a ticket scalper? My friend is, was, and he's the one who gave me the phony tickets. Your friend. But now there's this other guy who'll tell the police unless I sell him your letter. So I was thinking if you wrote another letter that wasn't too embarrassing, I could sell him that one and my friend won't go to jail. Why don't I just write you 10 letters? Then you can make $1,000. No, you don't understand. It's not about the money. No, you don't care about money just to keep your friend out of jail. Right. So how does this other guy know about my letter? My friend told him, you are unbelievable. You don't understand. Maybe you should have your friend explain it to me. She stood up. You're just another hustler, anything for money. What do you know about money, Armpit asked. You don't have a clue. You say you just want to sing in places like this and pass around the hat. You wouldn't know how to live like that. Here, buy a jacket, only $1,000, charge it to your room. You wouldn't have a clue. Oh, I don't have a clue, asked Kara. She stood up. I just have one question, she said. Who was it who kissed me, you or your friend? She picked up her coffee and tossed the contents at him, splattering him with coffee and cream. Several people applauded. A woman in red leather said, you go, girl. She did just that, right out the door. Arpit sat there a moment, wiping himself with a napkin as he tried to figure out why Kara thought X-ray had kissed her.